And of course, we are live across the globe. Happy Tuesday, everybody. It's time. It is. It's time for the money news that matters. I'm Aaron Heselhurst, and this is Talking Business. Let's take a look at the top story, end-to-end -end encryption. Mm, WhatsApp's big selling point, right? Mm, well, now, one and a half billion WhatsApp users are being urged to download the latest update to the messaging app. It's after the discovery of a security flaw allowing users to be spied on. Hey, we're going to be hearing from this cybersecurity expert who says the reality is that no software application, even WhatsApp, is immune. Software vulnerabilities are a fact of life. Yeah, all of that coming up on this edition of Talking Business. Hey, good morning, America. Evening, Asia. Hello, well, welcome to the program. Let's get a cracking because Facebook and security breach. Sound familiar? Well, it should do, except this time it involves Facebook's messaging app, WhatsApp, trusted, of course, by millions because of its end-to-end -end encryption. In fact, though, one and a half billion WhatsApp users are now being urged to update their apps immediately to tackle a security flaw, allowing users to be spied on via their devices, keypad, microphone, even camera. WhatsApp says it rolled out a fix. They did that on Friday to stop hackers being able to install the malicious software on iPhones and phones and Androids just by leaving a missed call. That's how they got in there. And it describes the attack as pretty sophisticated. The software is reported to have been developed by an Israeli security firm, NSO Group, which has been referred to in the past as a cyber arms dealer. Mm. NSO says its technology is licensed to authorize government agencies for the sole purpose of fighting crime and terror, and it doesn't operate the system itself. Bam, let's get rid of that because Emily Orton is director of cybersecurity company Darktrace and joins us and a familiar face, Emily, good to see you. Um, so we keep talking about this encryption, yeah. but am I right that the, the message, you're typing the message, you send it, it's only when it's going through the airwaves that it's encrypted mm -hmm. and then when it lands on the other device, the receiving device, it's not encrypted, but these people got into the device. That's right. So instead of trying to intercept um, the yes. traffic, in which case they would just get encrypted, they wouldn't be able to see the content. They haven't done that. They've actually been able to um, get malicious software onto your device and essentially remotely access it. So they're reading it as if you would. They're not actually intercepting uh, right. encrypted traffic. So, so they put this fix out, they say, mm -hmm. on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed actually on mine, I got an update mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. on it. Um, but if you were targeted, and the whole purpose was to, they use the WhatsApp door to get into the device, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you fix the WhatsApp, does that actually remove the so-called spyware from the device? It's not clear yet, um, because we don't know exactly how this piece of spyware works, yeah. but it looks very likely that you'd be protected. This patch seems to be, so they seem to be saying that that would um, remove this, this particular threat. But remember that attackers are innovative. They will find the next vulnerability. These guys are not going to sh shut up shop. They're going to be looking for the next vulnerability and for the next um, thing that they can exploit. And so we're really continuing this ongoing battle of sort of patch vulnerability gets exploited, right. etc. We need to get a better at uh, dealing with this. Companies that are more ahead on this are proactively looking for vulnerabilities and shutting them down early. We can't be at a stage where we're sort of 
by chance finding out that, oh, actually, yeah. there's an espionage operation uh, yeah. going and on. The, and this, this Israeli company allegedly mm -hmm. behind making the, the spyware. I mean, is that common? I mean, are there a lot of organisations out there making this sort of spyware and then selling it to governments? Absolutely. It's a big industry. Um, there are a lot of, um, sort of hacker groups or collectives who license their, either their services or perhaps just sell or license software mm. uh, and say, well, you know, you, you know we, we, we trust it's being used for the right, for the right reasons. Now, of course, they're making um, money out of that. And of course, you have nation states and criminals who, are, who have their own uh, software being developed as well. So there's a, there's a whole gamut. And, and just in your experience, I mean, this is the world we live in today, right? But in your experience, how big is this? This is a a big thing, this, this, this attack. It's a huge it. industry, and I think, you know, this is a head, headline-grabbing sort of story today, yeah. but, but the reality is every single day you have espionage, you have nation-state, yeah. you have criminals active. These are run like businesses, you know, and, and I think at the point where we have very sophisticated technology and being used by these groups, their return on investment's getting greater and greater. Wow. These okay. guys are making well. a lot of money. Okay. Emily, it's short and sweet, but it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for coming on in. Emily Orton from Dark Trace there. Okay. Good morning. It's the 14th of May. Welcome to BBC Newsroom Live. I'm Joanna Gosling. WhatsApp says it's found and fixed a major security flaw in the messaging service that allowed hackers to install surveillance software on devices. Facebook, which owns the company, says the attack targeted a select number of people. WhatsApp's one and a half billion users are being urged to update their app. As our North America technology reporter Dave Lee explains. Human rights organizations say this is the attack they had always feared was possible. A flaw that meant attackers could implant surveillance software without the target needing to do anything. WhatsApp has told me it found the problem around 10 days ago and over the course of this month has been notifying human rights groups, journalists and US law enforcement. The attack was said to have been developed by the NSO Group, an Israel-based security company known for creating ways to hack into the most popular devices and systems and selling those tools onto governments and intelligence agencies. In a statement, the NSO Group said its products were about helping countries fight crime and terrorism. The firm said it played no part in determining who was targeted. But this week, groups led by Amnesty International are calling on the Israeli military to revoke the NSO group's license to sell its products overseas, citing what it described as mounting evidence the tools were being used for human rights abuses. WhatsApp has urged all of its users to update their apps as a precaution, but this is a cyber attack noteworthy not because of how many people were affected, but because of who those people may have been. Well, let's talk now to Emily Taylor, Associate Fellow in International Security at Chatham House. Welcome. Thanks very much for joining us, Emily. And at this stage, we, we don't know the numbers and we don't know who's been affected, do we? Do, do you think that the people who've been affected would have been informed? Would they know by now? Uh, there's, uh, as you say, it's early days yet, and Facebook have actually moved quite quickly to fix this patch, and, to, and they're saying that they've been in touch with civil society organisations. As your last report mentioned, it, it appears to have been highly targeted, or that's what we know at this stage, to those working in the human rights sectors. Uh, one lawyer who is representing uh, people uh, who are uh, taking legal action against the group NSO has alleged that, that they were targeted with this exploit as well. Explain more about how it works, because it gets in via WhatsApp. You, the, the, so the phone you, owner doesn't have to do anything. It's not like, you know, sometimes when we think, well, at least we just shouldn't open um, yes, don't attachments. Click links. But it's not it, like that, is it? And once it gets in, it can do pretty much anything. That's right. So uh, what we're hearing is that this is it comes in through a missed call so you don't even have to answer the call and the the uh, reports are also that the phone logs can be altered afterwards so you don't may not even uh, know on your phone that you've missed that call but what's happening in that is that it, uh, the exploit is is doing what's called a buffer overflow so it's sending too much data it's using the voice call uh, uh, abilities in WhatsApp and sending too much data and then it knows what will happen to that data or how it will be handled by the app when that overflows and that's how it gets in. What it does when it gets there we don't know but WhatsApp is a very pervasive application. It's on even when it appears to be off and also it has very very wide-ranging permissions so it can 
obviously use your camera and video because we use that uh, when we're using the app. But concerns would be that because it is end-to-end uh, -end encrypted, can the exploit also access your private encryption keys? If so, that would be very serious because it could then set up the, the ability to spoof authenticated users uh, in encrypted chat, which would be very worrying for those involved in human rights uh, protections and other dissidents. What was this originally designed for? It's, I mean, it was, it was designed for government use, wasn't it? That's right. Now, I mean, you'll have heard over the last few years, many governments, including our own, have concerns about what they would call going dark, the internet going dark, the increased use of end-to-end -end encrypted applications and devices. Now, that's great for those who worry about privacy and want secure uh, communications. But if you're on the other side and you're actually trying to fight terrorism, fight organized crime, you need to be able to do your job. And so there's been a lot of focus, particularly on WhatsApp, because it's so popular and it just doesn't take very much ingenuity to use it if you're planning something bad. And so a lot of, uh, a lot of resources will have gone into trying to, to get into to, uh, the ends of those. It's an end-to-end -end encrypted application. So that means if you're sitting at one of the ends, you're in a very powerful position to read everything and potentially to also to range across the phone or device if, if that is what the exploit uh, um, enables. So what can people do to protect themselves? Update your phone. So you will see, you get, mess you get little indications that there are, there are updates that you need to download do that because those are usually to fix security uh, flaws. They might also be enabling new features, but generally speaking, it's a good practice to update your phone, update your device. Uh, Facebook has been very responsible. In, it has gone out in a very timely way, not only to fix this, but to inform users. And that is a great practice. You'll remember a few years ago, Joanna, that when there was a hack of Ymail, it took three years for the public to be informed. This is much more real time. Thank you very much. Emily Taylor, thank you. Thank you. Let's get more on the news that WhatsApp says it's found and fixed a major security flaw in the messaging service that allowed hackers to install surveillance software on devices. Facebook, which owns the company, says the attack targeted a select number of people. Amnesty International says the attack was one human rights groups had long feared was possible. Let's go live to Dana Ingleton, Deputy Director of Amnesty Tech. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, so why do you say you've been fearing this coming for some time? Well, basically, NSO Group has been um, basically talking about the fact that they've been developing this capability, um, yet we, we weren't sure that it, we had no verification that it was actually possible. So this news from Facebook and WhatsApp that, in fact, they had exploited a vulnerability in the platform to carry out uh, targeted surveillance of human rights defenders with what is called a zero-click, <clears throat> pardon me, zero-click capability, meaning you know, traditionally, <clears throat> for NSO group technologies, particularly Pegasus, the target had to be sent a link, and that target had to click on the link to make the um, infection live. With this new capability that they obviously do have and luckily has been exposed, it means that you don't have to do anything. Um, you get a missed call on your phone, and the spyware is installed, making the already invasive spyware even more invasive and more of a threat to human rights defenders and civil society. So we don't know who is behind this hack. We don't even know who was actually targeted or even whether the people that were targeted know themselves. But uh, Facebook, which owns WhatsApp, is telling everybody to go for the latest security updates that they've, they've put out. Um, in terms of the capabilities of the, the virus that can be put into to people's phones as a result created by NSO Group, what more do you know about it and you know, why it was created and who has... Who could use it? Who can get access to it? I mean, is it tightly regulated? Who can actually buy it from, from groups like NSO? 
Well, actually, um, that's a very timely question because just today Amnesty International is supporting a case being uh, being submitted to the Tel Aviv District Court in Israel, which is an administrative court. It's about 30 Israeli citizens who are petitioning the court to ask them to basically force the Ministry of Defense, which is the regulatory body in Israel that deals with this kind of technology, to revoke NSO's export license. Um, it is the, um, the company that is suspected to be behind this. Um, and th the exact problem is that there is no proper due diligence. They do sell to governments to use to fight crime and terrorism. But over the last couple of years, there's been mounting evidence that actually their technologies are used to target human rights defenders, to try and scare them to, um, to, to, to commit human rights violations against these human rights defenders. Um, and there is no regulation or proper regulation of this company or the industry, which certainly needs to stop. We need more accountability. And one of the one of the particular issues that you raise is it's hard to know exactly who was targeted. It's hard to know if you were targeted. Um, and so we therefore need this, by its nature, very secretive uh, industry to be a little less uh, less secretive, more accountability, more due diligence processes so that we can uh, help easily identify unlawful targets um, and also get accountability for those that were targeted. I, I mean, it's not, I'm going to ask a question which I'm sure you can't answer, but in terms of of how much it may be out there and how widely something like this may be being used, what are your expectations? So I think we do need to recognize that this is very, this is for targeted attacks. This kind of tool, which is sold to governments by NSO group, is used um, in a very targeted manner. So as Facebook and WhatsApp have said, it's a very good idea for everyone to immediately update their WhatsApp app. It's a good reminder for all of us on digital hygiene to make sure that we're always updating these apps, which are constantly patching vulnerabilities. Um, but I don't think it necessarily means that everybody uh, is, is suddenly at risk. I think it means that we need to continue to hold governments who are notorious for committing human rights violations to account for the misuses of these kinds of technologies against defenders. And we need to better regulate the industry to make sure that, A, we're getting accountability for the attacks that have already happened, but that has a knock-on effect of protecting the rights of us all um, if there is proper due diligence on the, the use of this kind of technology. Donna Ingleton from Amnesty Tech, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, joining us now is Joyce Hackme, who's a Cyber Research Fellow at Chatham House and the co-editor of the Journal of Cyber Policy, which provides regular analysis on cyber policy issues. And we're very grateful to you for joining us here on BBC News. Thank you. Uh, WhatsApp sells itself on the fact that it's incredibly safe, but this news would, well, seem to suggest otherwise, wouldn't it? Yes, you're right. I think there's uh, in this technology world and how technology is developing on a continuous basis, nothing is safe forever. Security is a journey and while you can be secure for a while, as technology develops, you open yourself to vulnerabilities. Uh, I think the way WhatsApp uh, uncover this uh, vulnerability and fix it uh, uh, relatively quickly is uh, to its advantage, I have to say. Okay, so you would praise them for that. That's interesting. Can you tell us a little bit more about how this actually happened? Because uh, it's not like uh, us opening a dodgy attachment, is it? It comes from, from a, some, a simpler thing as a missed call. Exactly, you're exactly right. And this has been allegedly marketed by the NSO group that is behind this technology as zero-click technology. So you don't even need to do anything uh, as a targeted uh, person, which is really concerning. So in the past, uh, NSO group was known for its um, a te a flagship technology called Pegasus, uh, where basically they used to uh, send a malicious link to the target person phone, and this person had to click on that link for the uh, malware or the spyware uh, to be uh, downloaded on their phone. Now, with this attack, as you rightly said, you didn't need even to do, uh, you didn't need to do anything. The spyware will be uh, downloaded on the phone. Uh, the, the only thing that the attackers needed was the phone number of the targeted person. So they would call that person uh, via WhatsApp and whether they pick up or not is irrelevant to the success of the uh, spyware. And the minute this happens, then the spyware uh, 
uh, basically uh, allows for the content of the phone to be mirrored on a computer screen somewhere in the world, giving access to uh, contacts, to emails, to location, and potentially to face-to-face -to -face conversations conducted nearby. To be clear, this NSO group that you were talking about, they're not using this data themselves, are they? They are, they are using this to, to, to sell a product. Uh, I presume that someone like you and me can't go out and buy it. Who would be buying this kind of product to enable them to access WhatsApp messages? Yeah, very good question. I th well, uh, in the last few years, NSO has been involved in several cases where um, governments uh, from around the world, from the Middle East to Latin America, have used NSO technology to spy on dissidents, to spy on human rights activists, and even on political rivals. So NSO, Techno NSO group sells the technology. They have repeatedly denied responsibility in uh, their, uh, basically in these illegal spying activities. However, there are ongoing lawsuits um, against, uh, the, uh, against this uh, Israeli-based cybersecurity company. And there, has been, there have been some uh, leaked documents that suggest that actually this company has been a complicit in this uh, the illegal digital uh, spying, uh, or at least they were aware that these activities were taking place. Joyce Hackney, we must leave it there. Good to hear your thoughts. Many thanks. Hello, this is Impact, bringing you all the day's top stories and later in the programme, more news in depth. I'm Geetha Goramuthi. One and a half billion WhatsApp users are urged to update their software following a spyware attack. It's thought the spyware can be installed by calling any phone, even if it isn't answered. We'll speak to our cybersecurity reporter about just how it works. That's all coming up on Impact. Welcome to the programme. We're live for the next 30 minutes. You can give me your views at Geetha Goramuthi. WhatsApp users are being warned to update their app after a security breach allowed hackers to remotely install surveillance software. A simple voice call allowed spyware to be installed even if the call wasn't picked up and the record of that call was just then deleted. Well, we've heard from WhatsApp, which is owned by Facebook in the last few minutes, and it says that it was a pretty sophisticated attack and that it has all the hallmarks of a private company working with governments on surveillance. It's referred the breach to the U.S. Department of Justice. More details now from our technology correspondent, Rory Kefflin jones One and a half billion people around the world use WhatsApp in the belief that it's a very secure way of communicating. Now it's been revealed that a flaw allowed attackers to install spyware simply by making a missed call. And that enabled them to monitor everything the user did on their phone. WhatsApp is a very pervasive application. It's on even when it appears to be off. And also it has very, very wide ranging permissions. So it can obviously use your camera and video because we use that uh, when we're using the app. Users of both Apple's iPhone and Android devices are being advised to install an updated version of WhatsApp. WhatsApp's owner Facebook says it uncovered this vulnerability earlier this month and acted to fix it. It believes a select few users were targeted by what it calls an advanced cyber actor and the finger is being pointed at an Israeli security company. NSO provides surveillance tools to governments and has previously been accused of helping them to spy on human rights activists. They do sell to governments to use to fight crime and terrorism. But over the last couple of years, there's been mounting evidence that actually their technologies are used to target human rights defenders, to try and scare them to, um, to, to, to commit human rights violations against these human rights defenders. In a statement, the Israeli firm said NSO's technology is licensed to authorized government agencies for the sole purpose of fighting crime and terror. The company does not operate the system. Keeping our communications secure from both hackers and governments is a constant battle for the technology companies. This flaw has been fixed. There are undoubtedly more yet to be discovered. Well, let's speak now to Carl Leonard, the principal security analyst at cybersecurity firm Forcepoint. Thanks so much for coming in to talk to us here on Afternoon Live. 
our understanding is that this was a targeted attack. So does that actually mean that most of us don't need to be that worried about this because we weren't actually being targeted? Well, indications are thus far that it was a select group of individuals that might have been targeted with this spyware. The general advice is even if that's the case, we should all update WhatsApp applications on your, on your phones. Take that opportunity to do that uh, and, and actually check that the version is as per the Facebook guidance. Make sure we've got it updated. I want to come back to that, but just to pick, pick up on your point, you said a select group. I mean, do we have any sense of who might have been targeted and perhaps even more importantly, why? There are some reports of um, the, the type of job titles that people might have or the role that they people play. Mm. The key thing really to take away is that this type of malware, this spyware, is typically repurposed by cyber criminals to then attack the masses, so the general public. So whilst we ourselves might not have anything incredibly valuable for this specific threat actor who might have conducted this attack, it's wise to still seek to protect our data because we know that cyber criminals have repurposed the data and hopefully we can through you know collectively updating and keep on updating other apps as well not just this one we can reduce the attack surface area for these attacks and for the, the wider cyber criminal groups as well. So what you're really saying is a vulnerability has been exposed and we need to take precautions to protect ourselves against it. So what is the best way of doing that? Right. So the best way to do is automatically update your apps and there's a setting within your Android and your iPhones that you can set it to auto update. Therefore, you don't have to worry if a new version of an application has been made available, your phone will take that uh, for you and apply it for you. So that's the best thing to do. Right. Can you give us any sense of who was responsible for this? Indications are that it might have been the more sophisticated attackers, uh, not the average cyber criminal. Uh, however, the method by which they inject the code into the device is 30, 40 years old. This, this is a buffer overflow. It's not a new technique. What's so a buffer overflow for? A buffer overflow is when code can be uh, allocated to a particular process, a program right. on, on your device, and that memory uh, can then be uh, extended and, and go beyond what it was originally designed for. And unfortunately, code that's spilled out into other areas of memory can then be run uh, or cause a crash condition that the malware author can then run additional code. I thought WhatsApp was supposed to be one of the most secure messaging apps. Uh, I mean, am I to take away from this that that's not the case? And really, we shouldn't be trusting any of these things? When software developers create code, they go through extensive testing procedures to make sure that these vulnerabilities are identified and reduced. So the attack service area, as we call it, is less reduced. However, the complexity of applications code these days that we think nothing more than just sending photos or messages to friends and family, the code base is enormous that goes to allow us to do that. There unfortunately will be software bugs found in, in probably future versions of this app, in other apps as well. That's why it's so important to apply these updates when those updates are made available. Do you use WhatsApp? I have used WhatsApp in the past. Yeah. <laughs> you, you may know something we don't. But I, <laughs> I make decisions based off of what's the risk presented to me, what are the alternatives. And if members of the public can sort of weigh that up and say, I'm going to use this feature for this reason, the alternatives aren't as helpful or useful in this, but you can then make wise security decisions. Okay, Carl Leonard, good to talk to you. Thanks Thank for you coming much. in. Thanks. Hello, this is Impact, bringing you all the day's top stories and later in the program, more news in depth. I'm Geetha Gurumuthi. One and a half billion WhatsApp users are urged to update their software following a spyware attack. It's thought the spyware can be installed by calling the phone even if it isn't answered. Our cybersecurity reporter will tell us how it all works.
Welcome to the programme. We're live for the next 45 minutes and you can give me your views at Geetha Goramuthi. WhatsApp users are being warned to update their app after a security breach allowed hackers to remotely install surveillance software. A simple voice call allowed spyware to be installed even if the call wasn't picked up and the record of that call was then deleted. WhatsApp, which is owned by Facebook, said the attack targeted a select number of users and was orchestrated by an advanced cyber actor. With me is BBC sub security reporter Joe Tidy. Joe, just tell us a bit more about who has been targeted and what the company is saying. Well, we don't know who's been targeted. We don't know how many people have been targeted. What we do know is this is a sophisticated attack that would have been carried out by a very advanced group, probably for commercial gain. It's likely NSO uh, behind this. We don't know that for sure, but that's what everyone seems to be pointing at, and they haven't necessarily denied it. They say they're investigating it. So NSO we're looking are who, just to be clear? These are the Israeli firm that are responsible for these, effectively, these cyber weapons that are being used on a commercial scale. It's not unusual. In fact, it's routine for security agencies around the world to use the services of companies like NSO to gain access access to uh, otherwise very hard devices to get into. So, for example, they can get into your, your iPhone if you, if you denied the, the police uh, access to your iPhone, for example. Wasn't the point, though, about WhatsApp that it is all encrypted and you can't, therefore, see yeah. what's been sent? It's a huge selling point for the app. It's why a lot of people use it. It's why I speak to all of my contacts through WhatsApp, because we believe it's encrypted, therefore it's safe. And somehow these uh, hackers that are working for potentially this company have found a way to install malicious software simply by phoning so a WhatsApp call between me and you, and I can, you don't even need to answer, and I, I can put the malware on your phone, and then I can potentially read all your messages, see your pictures, watch your videos, and maybe even listen to your phone calls as well. So this is a It big wouldn't deal. be that exciting, I have to say, <laughs> in my case, but, but it is incredibly alarming, isn't it? And it, it points to the, the flaws in security all the time. I mean, is this simply because no matter what type of protected device you have, the technology experts will always then be able to jump one step ahead? Yeah, you could argue that. And... <sighs> When I, saw the, when I saw this story this morning, I, sort of, I wasn't that surprised because we know that these companies can do incredible things. They are cracking into phones. They can basically get into anything. But I suppose it's, for me, the most impressive thing in a way was how they did it, the idea of a, a no-click malware. So I didn't need to download anything. I didn't need to click on anything. I can just, they can have my number and That's suddenly it. I'm vulnerable. What, what would be the point of this? Well, the NSO group and other companies that do this sort of thing, they argue that they need to offer these sorts of services to security agencies around the world to protect us, because it's all about Terrorism. helping, yeah, so un uncovering uh, what's going on in terrorist networks, uh, listening in, using, the, using the, uh, these tools to get evidence for, for ongoing court cases. There is so an important price need for that. that's worth paying, someone will, say. Someone you will would, say? You could argue that, but then, of course, it's, it's a constant battle between privacy and security, and a lot of people will be reading this story today saying, well, actually, I'm not happy with the fact that my phone could be vulnerable. Joe Tidy, thanks very much indeed. Now, a huge global story. The messaging app WhatsApp has been hacked, and its one and a half billion users need to update their software to protect themselves. Here's the director of the cybersecurity firm Darktrace to explain how the hack takes effect. Instead of trying to intercept um, the traffic, in which case they would just get encrypted, they wouldn't be able to see the content, they haven't done that. They've actually been able to um, get malicious software onto your device and essentially remotely access it, so they're reading it as if you would. Well, the attack involved WhatsApp's voice calling function. Hackers call a target's device. Even if that call isn't picked up, the surveillance software can be installed via the call. And the spyware is believed to have been developed by NSO Group, an Israeli firm. Here's its website. It says the company builds software to help governments and agencies fight crime and terrorism. But this isn't the first time that NSO software has called controver caused controversy. Here's Tom Bateman. There have been numerous claims now that the software has been abused and sold to countries uh, that have questionable human rights records. Now, there have been two lawsuits filed in Tel Aviv against the company by activists from Mexico and from Saudi Arabia who say that the software was improperly used against them. As for NSO, well, it says that whenever there is any evidence that the software is misused, it will investigate that and shut the system down. And as for protecting people, well, it says its systems have been used to save countless lives. Well, according to the online rights group Citizen Lab, the hack was used as recently as yesterday to target a human rights lawyer. And the Committee to Protect Journalists warns it's been used to target reporters, activists and human rights defenders.
I asked our cybersecurity reporter Joe Tidy which client of NSO Group would want to hack such people. The sorts of tools that we're talking about here are military grade cyber weapons. They're used by government agencies, security agencies around the world. It's not unusual, in fact it's routine for governments and important uh, organizations to use these types of tools to gain access to phones that they need to gain, gain access to. For example, when they're trying to investigate terrorism or they're trying to uncover evidence from a locked mobile phone, for example, there are companies like this one that's being discussed in this story, the NCO group from Israel, that can be used and employed to gain access to these sorts of information. So we can, we can get, guess from that they're the sorts of the cu uh, customers that are using these, uh, these apps. Just how clever is this particular what, what you would call it, a, a hack. Yeah. I mean, it gets around all the things we thought were so secure in WhatsApp. Yeah, I mean, when I woke up and read this story this morning, I wasn't that surprised. I mean, there are these companies that seem to be mainly in Israel. They're extremely uh, adept at this sort of thing. Not that surprised that they gain access to WhatsApp, but it's how they did it. They managed to make a phone call, WhatsApp call, between one phone and the victim's phone, and you didn't even need to answer for it to... In infect your, your WhatsApp with this malware and that is extremely worrying. That's a, a no-click vulnerability. So no downloading, not even any interaction and I was able to get inside your phone. So you, you could be the most sensible and secure thinking person with your internet usage and this still could get you. Exactly. You could have ignored this call. You, you could have seen it come in. You just ignore it. That's still enough and that's the thing that's really got people worried about, about this, this, this vulnerability and this type of attack. But we don't know whether or not the attacker would only have had access to WhatsApp they could have had access to the entire phone. OK, more on our top story now. The social media messaging platform WhatsApp is urging its 1.5 billion users to update their app after it was targeted by hackers. Well, the company says surveillance software was remotely installed on a select number of mobile phones. So let's talk to Graham Cluey, a cybersecurity expert and the host of Smashing Security podcast. Interesting there, Graham. Um, you've obviously adjusted your privacy settings behind you. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, just, just looking at what's happened here, it's been described as a very scary vulnerability. Just how scary was it? Well, it's pretty bad if you're one of those small number of people who were targeted in this particular attack because it, through the attack, the remote hackers would be able to access all of your email, know who you've been calling, they'd be able to steal your photographs, uh, track your location, they'd even be able to turn on your uh, microphone and camera without you realising and you wouldn't be aware that your smartphone had been hacked. Okay, so I understand this is part of the, this is a, a very favoured, well-liked um, malware called Pegasus and this could be Pegasus 3 and we're starting to see this new emergence of zero click technology just how dangerous is it yeah when it, when an attack uh, targets a, a device either a computer or a phone and it doesn't require any user interaction that's particularly serious and so the exploit in WhatsApp which allowed Pegasus to be installed on these devices meant that those people didn't know that they were going to be hit it looks like though the vast majority of us 99.999 percent of us haven't been targeted with this attack. It looks like uh, the governments and intelligence agencies were targeting specifically maybe people who work in human rights and civil liberties, people who were enemies of their particular countries. They were the ones who were being spied upon with this exploit. Now, I understand that this problem was actually raised a, a number of months ago um, in collaboration with the University of, of Toronto. What do you make of how fast WhatsApp reacted to this and got that warning out? Well, we don't know exactly how long this bug has been exploited, uh, but it does appear that they've pushed out an update fairly promptly. What annoys me is when they pushed out this update to people's iPhones and Androids, they didn't say it was a security fix. They said, we've improved our support for stickers, which frankly, most people aren't going to be reassured about. It may encourage them, I don't know, to install the update, but they should have said there was a security fix in there as well. It's good that a billion plus people have been protected now with their WhatsApp installations. But like any other piece of sophisticated software, it likely has bugs. And we know that these encrypted messaging services are of interest to intelligence agencies. They want to be able to spy and snoop upon them. They are prepared to pay big money 
to find out how to crack them and how to steal information from people's phones. Yes, yeah, I suppose the big issue here with WhatsApp was its end-to-end -end encryption, and you have to wonder how they, they got into um, that chain of encryption at the beginning and encryption at the end. I mean, just how prevalent is the issue of backdoor weaknesses in software? Well, just to reassure people, there's no suggestion that the end-to-end -end encryption was actually compromised. What it appears to be is that if people received a malicious call, were crafted in a particular way, that would make the app on your phone break and allow some malware to be installed on your phone. End-to-end -end encryption, when implemented right, and I do believe they've implemented it right in WhatsApp and some of the other messaging services, it works well. But the message is not encrypted on the actual phone. So what the bad guys are trying to do is infect your phone, in this case via WhatsApp, in order to steal your messages and to spy on you. Backdoors, though, in encryption uh, systems are bad news. They are an absolute godsend to criminals who want to steal information. So encryption is a good thing. Of course it's sometimes used by bad guys, but it's used by all of us for good every single time we make a purchase online or we want to communicate securely. Imagine a world without encryption. There'd be many, many worse data breaches occurring. It's interesting this, isn't it, Graham? Because obviously the, the link has been made with um, Israel and NSO has admitted that they work with governments. They have said that they are regulated by Israel. But you have to question just how safe we are when the Israeli military don't carry smartphones. See, certainly hmm. senior pro officials don't carry smartphones themselves. They have phones developed for them. Are we safe? Is there anything we can do? There's no such thing as 100% security. You know, th that's impossible for any of us. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to make yourself more secure than the next person and make, sh make sure that you're a tougher target. And for most of us, if you follow fairly simple principles, then you should be all right. But you are right that cyber warfare, to use that horrible term, is heating up. Just in the last week, we saw the Israelis airstrike what they believe to be Hamas's cyber warfare HQ in Gaza. They blew up the building. That's now what's happening. Sometimes these cyber attacks turn into something kinetic instead. OK, Graham Cleary, um, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Let's get more from Dave Lee, who joins us from San Francisco. Dave, how clever is this software and who do we believe may have used it? Well, the software is incredibly sophisticated, of course. It's managed to uh, breach one of the most used uh, messaging apps in the world. Um, but I think we should separate this in two different questions. The first question being, you know, who created the ability for this to occur? And, and as we understand it, as you just heard from Tom there, we believe that's the NSO group, the uh, Israeli security firm that uh, sells its products to uh, various governments and law enforcement operations around the world. The bigger question, of course, though, is who was using it uh, in in this way because that's a separate matter entirely and frankly at this point we're not sure there is concerns about the particular nature of those being targeted whether they're lawyers or people working in human rights spaces um, but we don't know yet uh, potentially which uh, regime if indeed it was one that was targeting those people in particular uh, I think where WhatsApp is particularly concerned they say is that while you know in the past we talk about data breaches in terms of how many people have been affected and when it's a network like Facebook we hear those numbers don't we 1.5 billion on WhatsApp this is unlikely to be a large number of people I think it's much more likely it's gonna be a small group of people highly targeted so it's not so much how many people are affected but who those people were that were targeted uh, and for what purpose Dave what are the legalities around a company being allowed to commercially distribute hacking software to an agency or a government? The NSO Group is a company that is operating legally. They sell these tools as they state on the website, do they say, to uh, governments for the purposes of law enforcement. Now, the companies that, these, uh, that have these devices and systems that are targeted, they do everything they can to close the, the, the holes in their security that make it possible. Uh, but the NSO Group is allowed to do its business. One of the things that's particularly interesting, however, about the NSO Group, it's, it's uh, being based in Israel. It, it requires a license to sell its products internationally. 
internationally. Uh, and as we were just hearing from Tom in that clip there, there are calls for that license to be revoked because, as human rights organizations see it, uh, the tools are being used for purposes that the NSO group says it doesn't allow. Um, so I think the pressure as a result of this particular attack, uh, I think pressure is going to grow uh, on Israel to stop the export of these tools. Um, but as it stands, the NSO group is simply running its business. One brief question for you, Dave. What can users do to make sure they're protected? Well, users, as ever, and this is evergreen security advice, not just based on this attack, keep your apps updated. Go into the app stores for the phones that you use and other devices and just check that you're running the most recent version. Dave, thanks very much. Dave Lee there, live in San Francisco.